Welcome back to another review. I've got quite an interesting product in today. It's the XSTAR PB2, and this was sent in by XSTAR for a review and test. This is interesting because it's not just a power bank. You can also use this as a charger, but there are some limitations. It's just for the unprotected 18650 batteries. You can't use the protected cells in this. You've got the usual smattering of features with this, such as the uh, Auto automatic uh, activation, you also have the reverse polarity protection and the current distribution. And I'm just showing you the back of the box to give you some idea on the specs. So it can charge a cell at two amps or two cells at one amp. Outputs rated to 2.1 amps as a power bank. This is the bundle that you get included. User manual and a fairly decent length micro USB cable. We'll just look at the unit itself now. Very nice finish on this, similar to the Lenovo mouse I looked at a few months ago. It's got that soft touch finish. It does feel very premium. You have a cutout section on the side, just an indent there so you can get a fingernail in and lift off the door. And there is a button on the right side. That's for checking the power level. So no surprises on the top. We just have single output and a single micro USB input. And on the underside, just lists out some of the specifications again. Good finish on the uh, X-Star, and it also feels dense. The plastics have got a bit of uh, depth to them. In other words, they're not, they don't feel flimsy or weak. And you also magnetic cover on that is quite strong, actually. I was surprised how strong it was. That wasn't initially a concern. You don't want this coming off by accident, and it stays in place very firmly. You can see the markings here for the charging speeds and the direction of the cells. They've also got that soft touch finish on the inside. So slot length was about 87 millimeters. So just unprotected 18650s, not long enough for the protected cells. You can also use it as a battery tester as well. Here you can see I'm pretty low on this LG cell, around about 4%. It's pretty accurate in most cases I've seen. I'll put another battery in and that will give me a reading on that. I've just charged that cell, so that's coming up pretty much full. Now if I put the older cell back in, which is low, you'll see that it balances out. So that gives you a reasonably accurate idea of how much you have left on the power bank or if you need to charge the batteries. We just put the cover back on this and I'm gonna do a few more tests now. It also has a load balancing, so it will charge the lowest cell first and you can use it as a pass through as well. If you've got a phone, it will charge the phone first. So the charging speed on this was a touch under the two amps. I'm using a mains charger with this. If I take one cell out, it really only goes down very slightly. So you've just under the two amp charging on a single cell. There is a disadvantage to that later on, which I will get into. That's the best speed that I got out of it, just under the 1.95 amps. Now, once it's finished charging, you will see that it stops. It terminates completely. There's no additional current going through and it terminated at 4.2, 4.19 volts. So accurate termination, that's important for unprotected cells for obvious reasons, they have no circuit to stop overcharging. And this is the maximum draw that I got out of the unit. It was just under 2.4 amps. And that was a decent result off of that. I have two devices charging off of this. If I take one of the batteries out, you can still use it with just one cell. It's uh, pretty much half of what it was. So you get about 1.2, 1.15, 1.2 amps with a single cell in it. Auto starts and stops with this one, so you don't need to press that button on the side. That is purely just to check the remaining capacity on the batteries. Now I'm going to use the Samsung 35E cells. I have already tested these, and I know that they are accurate to 3,500 milliamps an hour. And I'm going to use my USB tester and see how much I can get out of the power bank, discharging it using normal devices. I'm not using anything other than phones, tablets, things like that as you would do normally, and I got a result of 4.375 milliamps an hour out of it discharge capacity. That's a decent result. It's not as good as some of the power banks that I've looked at, but it's certainly very acceptable. This just shows you your flashing when you get to below 10% and you have the polarity protection. It will come up with an error just to let you know on that. Whilst I'm talking a bit, I will put the user manual on the screen for you. That will come up very shortly. I have been using this for solar charging. It's been working well, even in overcast days. So that's one area that I do like. Obvious advantage with this type of power bank um, stroke charger is that you can just take the batteries out if they wear out or you need to use the power bank. You've got spare batteries, just put some other cells in it. It's very useful to have versus the sealed power banks. 
on the downside there's one obvious one for me and it's a strange emission is you only have two amp charging for a single cell I would have liked to have seen one of the slots have one amp charging and one to have the faster charging if you wanted to use it the Samsung 35e that I tested this with and other batteries are not recommended to charge at two amps because it will shorten the lifespan you can charge them at two amps but you'll just get less life out of the battery so that's why I'm making that particular point and I wish XSTAR had addressed that particular issue on the other hand it's not going to be a major issue if you're going to be charging two batteries at the same time because it will split the two amps between the two or you could attach it to something like a one amp output that will solve the problem if you're using high drain cells like the 30q and lg hg2 not a problem those cells can handle the two amp charge without having any detrimental effect on the recharge cycles but it is worth getting despite that i do like the premium finish the led display is very good albeit in bright sunlight you might need to shield it a bit it remains cool during charging accurate termination and it's just a handy device to have so i think it is worth getting despite that drawback but it's something i do wish xstar would address in possibly a future version so thanks for watching the video i do like to test things on the channel so make sure you do subscribe and i will see you in the next one